Greetings. I'm Wolfram Alderson and I'm CEO of the Hypoglycemia Support Foundation. And I'm here today with Roberta Ruggiero, who's our founder and president of the Hypoglycemia Support Foundation. And also our featured guest, Dr. Keith Berkowitz, who is a longtime medical advisor to the Hypoglycemia Support Foundation. So welcome to you all. Thank you, Wolfram. Thank you. Great. Well, this is meant to be a short and sweet video to, to ask some of the basic questions that people have out there about hypoglycemia, reactive hypoglycemia, why sh people should care and what they can do about it, and perhaps what it has to do with COVID-19. So I'm gonna ask those questions just separately and let Dr. Berkowitz answer them. Uh, this, is, this is a subject matter that he's eminently qualified to um, to answer these questions on and we're just so appreciative that he's here with us today to give us these just short and sweet answers to these big questions that we have. So I'll leave it to you Dr. Berkowitz. The first question is what is hypoglycemia? So hypoglycemia is a state where your blood sugar is low. Traditionally it's thought of as fasting hypoglycemia where someone wakes up in the morning with a low blood sugar. Right and as I understand it uh, hypoglycemia as sort of a general condition is associated with a lot of different medical conditions, correct? Correct. Traditionally, hypoglycemia is thought of as blood sugar that's low from overproduction of insulin, typically from an insulin-based tumor. Great. Now, the next question is, what is reactive hypoglycemia? So reactive hypoglycemia, which is the much more common condition, is low blood sugar in reaction to. And it's usually in relation to one of two things, either from food or from stress. Right. And why, why should people care about hypoglycemia or blood sugar health or their blood sugar being high or low or reactive hy hypoglycemia? Why is this important? For two main reasons. Number one is people forget that reactive hypoglycemia is actually a pre-diabetic condition. Like diabetes, which begins with overproduction of insulin, that's how reactive hypoglycemia also occurs. And number two, it's often the reason why people don't feel good. Often people have things like fatigue, difficulty sleeping, palpitations, um, difficulty concentrating. You know, uh, you know, they don't feel good after they eat. Very many things that are related to performance that they may not realize that are related to their blood sugar. So to paraphrase what you're saying is if we pay attention to low blood sugar and its symptoms um, and how this relates to food, it could help us prevent chronic conditions like diabetes down the road? Absolutely, because again, like diabetes, this is a reactive hypoglycemia is typically thought of as a syndrome that is caused by excess secretion of insulin. Unlike diabetes, the insulin levels may not be high, but what they are is inappropriate. And what that means is for that given blood sugar, too much, the pancreas is making too much insulin. And instead of the blood sugar going up after we eat, often what happens, the blood sugar drops down. And what are the typical culprits in this situation? What are some of the things that you look for first if you identify a patient that has a low blood sugar or reactive hypoglycemia? What, what are you looking for? Well, we're looking for what we call co-conditions that may be triggers. One of the main ones we talk about is hypothyroidism or underactive thyroid, which makes it difficult for your body to regulate its blood sugar, and especially the ability to convert protein into glucose. And what ends up happening is people often get what we call an adrenaline response or a stress response. Another one is digestion, where if digestion is slow, often what happens is glucose or the food you eat does not get there in time to manage and match with the insulin. And because of that, blood sugar will drop. And the other things is, is just fatigue, often fatigue where you can't, where food which should really serve as an energy producer or an energy booster actually has the opposite effect. And Dr. Berkowitz, can I ask a question? We're talking a lot of about physical reactions to hypoglycemia, reactive functional hypoglycemia. What about mental emotional reactions? How does that affect you? Know, just as critically, if not more important, a lot of people think of multiple conditions like depression, anxiety, um, even dementia as causes of insulin resistance, or we even call sometimes type 3 diabetes. And what happens to these individuals, the drop in blood sugar often can be a trigger of anxiety, 
It could be a trigger of, you know, mood disorder, of sleep issues, and that even long-term episodes of hypoglycemia that occur often, more often and continuously can lead to conditions such as dementia, including Alzheimer's, dementia, and Parkinson's. Well, there's plenty of anxiety going around today with COVID-19, and this is a really an unprecedented situation for most people. What does blood sugar health, low blood sugar, reactive hypoglycemia uh, have anything to do with COVID-19? So first of all, you know, uh, building on what Roberta said, one of the reasons where low blood, why low blood sugar is so problematic, it creates a panic state where your body goes into a panic mode and then it, it really seeks your stress hormones to kind of recover from it. One of the great examples, and I brought up before, is not only sleep, people can often get vivid dreams or nightmares when their blood sugar drops low. And that often happens because during the day, our cortisol or adrenaline, which keeps our body going, is often high. And in the nighttime, as our body rests, those symptoms get worse. And really important of reactive hypoglycemia is the fact that symptoms are often worse when we're at rest than in activity. And that's really a great differentiating factor. The reason COVID-19 is, is such a problem is for twofold. Number one, blood sugar dysregularity or dysfunction is a risk factor for disease progression. So when patients are admitted to the hospital, one of the markers of you know, health and, and of you know, survival is actually a blood sugar and insulin level. So that's number one. Number two is we often see and is people who are actually recovering from a chronic illness, they often will have more issues with blood sugar ish problems where their blood sugar will often drop low after in the recovery phase or post recovery phase from that. So again, the more stress in the body, which and blood sugar is one of those most important factors, the more difficult it is for the body to fight infection. I'm just curious if there's one more thread that weaves through here, which is inflammation. Uh, this, is there a common thread of inflammation or chronic inflammation, low blood sugar or reactive hypoglycemia and or COVID-19? Absolutely. So again, we're, and that's a great point, where COVID-19 has been found to be so problematic is that it's a virus that causes an acute inflammatory response. And now we've even seen maybe in a chronic or post-infectious inflammatory response. And where hypoglycemia or reactive hypoglycemia fits into that picture is, it's, again, it's an insulin resistant disorder, which means is there's an inappropriate amount of insulin circulating in your body. And one of our most problematic markers of inflammation and actually drivers of inflammation is insulin. So having all that excess insulin around because of you know, the inappropriate production is going to drive that chronic, both, uh, excuse me, both the chronic and the acute inflammatory processes. Well, the, the final question, thank you, is, is uh, what do we do about it? I mean, we have lots of resources at hypoglycemia.org, including videos from you, infographics, uh, you know, FAQs, et cetera. But what, just off the top of your head, what are some of the top things that people can do if they think that this might be a concern? Um, you know, what, what do they ask their doctor? Uh, what do they do about their diet? You know, uh, anything that comes to mind. Great question. So number one is actually first identifying the factors that correspond to reactive hypoglycemia. That's one of the hardest. So when they go to the doctor, often asking for to the blood work to be done when we look at glucose and insulin to be done after a stress, which means after food, to have food and then measure the blood sugar either an hour later or two hours later and also measure the insulin. And what we're looking for is numbers that don't fit together whereas there's an inappropriate amount of insulin for that given glucose, very critical. So from a treatment option, there's really two main factors that really play a role, which is number one is food, right? Our choices of food is managing our blood sugar. One of the most important is looking at our macronutrients and balancing out carbohydrates, protein, and fat. And just like a diabetic would, we have to watch what sources of carbohydrates we have, really avoiding refined sugars, too much grains. Um, and on the other side is also when we eat, managing to eat every three hours, people often do better when they have smaller meals more frequently so that they don't produce as much insulin for each time they eat. And the harder part, which I always say, and this is the COVID-19 pandemic part, is managing stress. So besides food being a trigger, stress is a trigger, and that's our adrenal hormone or cortisol. And this is especially seen in, 
individual that also have thyroid disorders as well as reactive hypoglycemia. And one of the first ways to do that is proper sleep, is allowing the body to restore. Also using exercise, using meditation, other methods to actually help the body cool down. I always think of reactive hypoglycemia as what we call an overdrive syndrome. The body's in overdrive. It's like having, reading a book without a sentence or an ending. So it keeps on going and going and going. In essence, what we want to do is pull that body back and allow it to recover rest. The same way people think of a factory at night, you turn off the lights so the machines get to cool down and they can function again the next day. Great. Well, finally, uh, we just want to thank you. So many times you've been available to help answer questions. Um, please describe your, we know that you're based in New York City. Uh, but you do have a website and a center. Maybe you could just share those just in case people want to try to reach out to you or if they happen to live in the uh, New York City area. Thank you so much, Will Friend. So my, cent my, my place of practice is a Center for Balanced Health. If you go to centerforbalancedhealth.com, you can, another source of information is also Instagram, which is Dr. Keith Berkowitz, and we post many videos on blood sugar because it is my favorite topic. And, and look at ways all, both to identify and treat as well as bring ideas to your doctor so they can identify and treat. Well, once again, and I'm sure Roberto would like to have some closing remarks. We're just so grateful for your expertise. You're always so generous with your time and, um, and your amazing wealth of knowledge on this subject. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Berkowitz. Take care. Bye-bye.